Hey guys, so we have a lot to cover in this video. Um, so let's go ahead and just jump right in. You know, the, the first thing I would like to direct your attention to is um, the instructions that I include in the root folder of the Epic Lens Flare and Starburst. And of course that's in the props folder in your um, my dad's th studio library. Um, so these instructions, um, I encourage you to um, read them carefully just so you can get a good sense of how, um, you know, how the set works and, and how everything kind of interacts. Um, we're not going to go over this in much detail right now, um, but we're just going to give you a bird's eye view of how you can jump right in and and start using these right away without too much too much work. So let's start with step one. So we double click on the set and that just loads uh, the entire light set into our scene. And I just switched to smooth shaded just to help you uh, give you a better visual. Oh, and I'll note parenthetically too that in our environment tab, um, I have my background set to black, and that just helps to see uh, what's going on. So if I were to twirl down our parent container, you'll note that we have a camera and a light, uh, and those are the two most important elements in our scene. And within the camera, um, we have a couple of our camera effects um, that are relate only to the camera. And within the light, uh, we have a lot of our lens flare um, effects. But you don't have to worry about that right now. Um, we're, we'll go straight to our instructions, which, which I also include here in a kind of condensed version um, of what's in the root folder. Um, so you can follow these instructions um, and, and get going right away. Basically, the, the most important thing to remember is we want to use our container to make our big adjustments. Um, first of all, to scale our container to match the scene. The, the scale of our scene so that the distance between our camera and our light you know roughly matches the scene um, and also to um, position the camera um, wherever we want it in our scene so that's the, the two most important steps and the reason why we use the container to do that is because it maintains all the proper proportions uh, in the light set. If we were to jump right in and start moving our um, camera, well, if I were to move the camera too far away, um, it would affect the um, uh, the appearance, and it basically get uh, degrades the realism. We we don't want to do that. Um, the big adjustments, we always start with, with the container and position our camera where we want it in our scene and then we can switch to the camera and then make our fine-tune adjustments uh, within the camera view um, and also step four which is to uh, line up our light wherever we want it. And so that's basically the instructions in a nutshell. Um, use the, con the container to make your, your macro adjustments to the scale and position, and then switch to the camera to make your fine-tune adjustments um, of the position of the camera and also position of the light. And try to avoid um, moving the light too far away 
um, because then you see it, it kind of messes things up and avoid moving the camera too far in the Z direction too um, or, or else funky stuff will begin happening. Um, so just keep that in mind when you're working with the set is you can do whatever you want but just try to avoid too big adjustments of the camera or the light in the z-axis. Okay, so that's just the by way of overview um, of how to get going with the light set. And what we'll do now is jump right in and begin rendering. So let's uh, redo back to our beginning here. And let's jump to our camera view and uh, maybe line up a shot. Let's say we're happy with that. We'll turn our sky dome on and let's switch to texture shaded only just to help help you see what we have in our sky dome. Um, it's basically just some clouds. And let's go ahead and render. So you can see here uh, right from the get-go uh, we're getting some pretty neat results. And you know we can move our camera around anywhere we want and the lens flares will will follow accordingly. And all we have in our scene, of course, is simply the sky dome and the lens flare light set. So if we were to turn our sky dome off, um, you get a better visual of what exactly the lens flares consist of. You have your starburst um, and all the components that make up the lens flare. And note also that how bright they are compared to when the, st when the sky dome is turned on. Um, and that's just something to always keep in mind when you're working with the lens flares is that a lot depends on the brightness of your background um, of how bright your lens flares will appear. And as a general rule of thumb, um, the more subtle they are, um, then the more realistic they will seem. So when you're working, when you're adjusting the luminosity, it's a good idea to keep it, keep it as subtle as possible uh, in most cases. Okay, so let's change a few options. Um, if we switch to step two here, uh, this will change our starburst. Um, and so let's, for example, say that we want to change to style three. So with our container selected, uh, we simply double click on the style we want and that switches our star starburst out. And now in step three, if we wanted to change the appearance of our lens flares, uh, we can do that. For example, let's say I wanted to change it from um, the pure blue light to maybe a yellowish hue. Well, we just double click on that and that changes all of the lens flares to that setting. Um, so it's very, very easy to work with. We can also change the, um, the chroma hoops too if we wanted to different styles. Now let's say we moved our camera over here um, to where now the lens flares are being drowned out. So in this case we want to increase the luminosity of our lens flares. So if we were to change from luminosity low to luminosity high, well now you can see that they appear more clearly um, in with the, the brighter background. Okay, so that's just an extra option I included here in the material presets. 
Now, if you wanted to, you can actually go in um, and adjust each lens flare individually, you know, in the material, the iRay material options. Um, and the they all have um, the base emission luminance and cutout opacity is the same exact material in in every lens flare. Um, so that's what you would change if you wanted to change it to something else. And I include um, in the textures folder um, more textures than I have options for. So um, if you don't find something out here uh, that suits your needs, you can always dive in further and um, choose different textures um, and cust uh, totally customize your, your lens flares according to your needs. Um, so you can get as deep and involved as you want um, to set up your shot just right. Okay, so now we have an example of a scene that's already been made. And all we want to do is import our uh, lens flare into the scene. And I would imagine that in most situations, uh, this is the kind of um, thing that you'll, you'll probably be doing. You have a scene that's already um, pre-made, even with a camera uh, position. You know, if I were to switch to this camera, we already have a shot lined up that we're happy with. And what we want to do is um, now add the lens flares to the scene and um, line up the lens flare camera um, exactly to the camera that we have in the scene. So I'm going to show you how to do this uh, right now, and it's very, uh, very simple to do. So all we do, of course, is first double click on the set. And that um, loads the set into the scene. And of course, we switch to the smooth shaded um, only to help give us a better visual of where the, uh, the lens flare is. So in our directions, the first step we do is um, we scale the entire set and we position the set um, by highlighting the container first. Um, so we want to scale it up um, so that our camera, the distance between the camera and the light roughly matches um, the distance between where we want the light and where we want the camera. So <clears throat> we're going to scale this up quite a bit. <clears throat> Um, and we're also going to move our the camera way back here uh, to where our uh, where, where the camera is set up already in our scene. And we can, you know, physically dra drag the handles if we want. Um, or there's another easier way. We can simply highlight the existing camera and copy its parameters and then paste those parameters onto the container. And we're simply going to paste pose to selected items. And that moves the um, camera, basically it moves our ELFS camera right to the exact position as the camera that we already have set up in our scene. So we switch to the camera and now our shot's already aligned up. Um, so now, uh, we probably have to um, play around with our scale just a little bit more. Now that our camera is lined up, let's now increase our scale. Um, we're just simply pushing our our light source back to the general vicinity of where the, um, the alien creature is. So maybe around there. And it doesn't, again, it doesn't have to be exact. Um, this is just a ballpark. So we'll switch to our ELFS camera now. And 
as we note here in our instructions, we just completed steps A and B. We scaled um, and positioned our set. And now, um, in our viewport, we simply uh, position the light. So we highlight the light and we position it where we want it to be. And it's better to switch now to a texture shaded just so we can see where we want to put the, the light source. And in this case, we're just going to line it up with this, the eye, or what appears to be the eye, uh, of this alien creature here. Okay? And, and that's basically it. So if we were to render, um, we would be pretty much good to go. All we would have to do from this point forward is make adjustments to our material settings um, to how we want them. Okay, and of course we can um, change that starburst out uh, to maybe something a little bit different, say this style 6. And we can even go into our light, highlight the starburst, and decrease its scale perhaps to maybe something like 200. Okay, so that's basically it. That just gives you a general idea of how to um, import the lens flares into a scene uh, that you already have made and line it up with a camera that you already have in your scene. As you can see, it's fairly uh, simple to do and you can now f go further and tweak things um, from here if, if you'd like.